Hey YouTubers and welcome to ESGN Net and this is a new series I'm starting. It is called ESGN Game Center uh, and basically we're going to talk about uh, things that are going on in uh, well things are going on in pro wrestling uh, and in the major sports baseball, football, basketball, etc. Um, things that are going on, on off, not just on the field but off the field um, so, in this episode, this is the very first episode, and of course we're talking about WWE. Uh, this coming Sunday is the uh, new pay-per-view they have, which is called Payback. And as you see here, we got uh, Wade Barrett, who has the Intercontinental Championship, going against, uh, putting the title on the line against The Miz, and a guy by the name, a new cat by the name of Thon Dong. Go, 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 go. Um, and we got some interesting news today. Uh, we found out today, uh, if you watch Raw uh, tonight, uh, we found out that uh, Fandango uh, got a injury um, on uh, this past, I believe it was this past Friday or this past Monday's Raw. Uh, I don't know if it was on SmackDown this, this past Friday or it was last Monday's Raw. But he uh, got a concussion. As you know, the WWE does take concussions very seriously. Um, unlike, um, well, the NFL's getting better at it. But, you know, I mean, honestly, you, you know, it, it could be a little bit better. Um, but, um, as you know, Adolph Ziggler was supposed to defend his title against uh, both Alberto Del Rio and... Um, I believe uh, Jack Swagger. So, uh, at last month's uh, pay per view Extreme Rules, but unfortunately he couldn't do it because of his uh, concussion that he had himself caused by uh, Jack Swagger. So, uh, you know that that and it happens, and it's unfortunate. And I'm sure there have been a really great match, but uh, now Dolph Ziggler's back. He's been made cleared now, so now he can be. Uh, back in action and defend his title against uh, Alberto Lero, who won the match between Jack Swagger and, and, and um, him uh, for the number one contendership to go against Dolph Ziggler at this month's pay-per-view called Backlash. And as you see here, we're in a uh, great arena. Uh, they really haven't showed any uh, what the Backlash is going to look like, but uh, this is one of the uh, creative arenas that I've seen online that um, actually looked pretty well. It looked pretty good uh, for just a custom-made arena. Um, so if I knew, if knew who did this, I would have gotten props for it because uh, it's really nice. I mean, uh, how they do with the, the ring and stuff like that. So there you see the Miz coming down the ring, uh, going for the Intercontinental Championship once again, which I still say he, that he needs to get more love and... Uh, get back in the title hunt as the uh, WWE champion, or you know, we're, we're the uh, world heavyweight. It'd be nice, I mean, you know, have that nice piece of gold around his waist. So, uh, but yeah, Fandango is going to be out of this match, uh, and tonight, um, actually here pretty soon. Uh, rumor has it that there's going to be um, a new um, third member. Uh, somebody, somebody's gonna. They're gonna still have a triple threat match, but it's gonna be somebody else. So, I want to know from you guys. You guys can leave your comments below. Who do you think? Now, rumor has it, it's going to be um, Paul Heyman's new client by the name of Axel or uh, Curtis Axel. Uh, I, I, for some reason, I was thinking of Axel Foley of Beverly Hills Cop movies, and I, I don't know why. Anyway, <laughs> getting a little off subject there. Um, it's uh, Curtis Axel, as you know. He's the father of the late, great uh, Kurt Henning. Uh, as everyone knows, as Mr. Perfect. Um, you know, we know Kurt Axel actually as Michael McGillicuddy. Or if some people that follow him in the um, NXT, uh, the early NXT, or. Um, Actually, it wasn't in NXT. It was actually uh, FCW, Florida State Champions Wrestling. Um, he was he went by his uh, his birth name, which is Joe Henning. Um, so you know, uh, I don't. Know if, yeah, I mean, I know that because I I see matches of his when he was in FCW. And, 
stuff like that. Um, well, he did some uh, indie stuff and some stuff for Japan. So just like his dad, you know, cutting his teeth in other in other companies and um, get you know get his name out there. Uh, but then you see a Fandango, uh, <laughs> oh, aka Johnny Curtis. Uh, he won't be in the match because of the concussion. Um, so, do you guys think that was a? Do you guys think that it's a great idea putting a, another guy in there uh, since Curtis couldn't do it? Uh, or, well, in this case, he's unable to do it because because he's not medically cleared yet. He has to still pass a lot of the uh, concussion tests and whatnot. Um, or should the Miz and uh, Wade Barrett should go after? Should they just be going after the title? Uh, to be quite honestly, I th to me my my personal opinion is let Curtis Axel in there. Um, you know he's had title he's had title success before um, when he was Michael McGillicuddy him and David Otunga had the the uh, tag team titles as part of uh, the new Nexus. I don't know if, and now that I'm thinking about it, this wasn't that far. It wasn't too far off. It was just like two years ago when this, uh, when the new Nexus happened and uh, CM Punk took over. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, I think it'd be a great idea. I think it'd be great for the uh, match with uh, Curtis Axel in there. Um, but quite honestly, because I've, I've actually said this before with some friends and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I think I've mentioned this in another video. I think the WWE does a bad job of um, hyping their titles like they used to. Uh, now, I don't know if it's because I'm just more, you know, I'm an adult now and, um, you know, I'm not as a kid, so I don't have that, you know, that, that, just that, you know, like, oh man, what's going to happen? You know, what, you know. I, I, I don't know. This storytelling, I, I, I still say WWE does a pretty good job with it. Uh, it's getting a little better now. Uh, but I think with the title defenses, I I mean, they, I can't remember when, well, it was WrestleMania. Last time Wade Barrett actually defended his title. So that was about a month, about two months ago, three months ago. And he's now defending his title. And I really, truly, I think they just slapped this storyline together. Um, because they they can't find anyone worthy enough to face Barry, uh, worthy enough to take to take the title away from him. Uh, you know, I, that, and that's my honest opinion. Um, quite honestly, I think Wade Barrett's too talented uh, to be a uh, I guess you could just say a mid mid uh, level mid card guy. Uh, you know, wearing a mid card title, uh, as they say in the business. Um, you know, he needs. You know, when he was with the Nexus. He was red hot, um, and I think at the time they were really pushing Sheamus uh, to, you know, for the for the world title, the WWE title, and I think that uh, you know it was just bad timing, I guess, on the WWE's thing because um, you know you had these two great upcomers that were going against uh, you know giving John Cena at the time some hard times. Um, you know, because for a while there, Sheamus, I remember when he first came in, he was a heel. I mean, everyone hated him. Um, and I'm one of them. I mean, I was like, man, this guy is freaking huge. He's, you know, like, you know, he's fiery red hair. And, um, I remember the episode where they, him and uh, Sheamus and Cena were just going at it back and forth. And um, Cena made a comment saying, okay, you know, listen here, Powder. And I just laughed. I cried. Um, and a lot of my friends were thinking, you know, looking at me like, what the hell are you talking powder? Like, you know, they're thinking like powder, like token powder or, you know, baby powder. Or I'm like, no, 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 guys. I'm talking about, I'm like, I had to tell myself, like, there's a movie called Powder. Uh, about this real kid, was, you know, he was, uh, he had these supernatural powers. You get, you have to YouTube it, uh, check it out, or look it up on, on uh, Wiki or on Wikipedia or something. Uh, it, 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 when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, I might leave a link in, in the description here uh, on Wikipedia about, about the movie and whatnot. But um, yeah, it was. I mean, it was. I I died laughing. It was so hilarious. Um, but yeah, with Wade Barrett, I, I still say that um, he needs he needs to get in the world title scene soon. Uh, he had a, a good rivalry between him and, and Orton, uh, which I really enjoyed. Uh, when Orton was, uh, you know, he was gone for a while there um, because of uh, well, it was because of his aggravating his uh, chronic uh, shoulder injuries. 
Um, but it was also he had some legal issues going on. Uh, he got in trouble for uh, marijuana, and uh, so he had. A, he had I think he had a. He, had, he broke the uh, WWE well uh, wellness health and wellness policy that they have, and uh, he had to set out for I believe sixty to ninety days. Um, and yeah, at the time, I mean, at the time, I thought I'm like, okay, this would be a good time, you know, like push Barrett. Um, you know, Orton's not there. Then this is a good way to push push or, uh, push Barrett to you know be champion, and then maybe have Randy come back and take the title away from him. Um, but it didn't happen. Um, so yeah, um, Barrett's one of those guys. I, I really think that WWE is um, maybe they're holding back for a good reason. Maybe there's a reason why. Um, or maybe he's ruffled too many feathers backstage, and um, you know they're kind of giving him, just kind of sticking with it, with the uh, you know intercontinental title. And but when they honestly, when they do that, to me, that's punishment on the title itself, because I mean that title is very prestigious. I mean Chris Jericho, nine-time intercontinental champion. You got Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's an intercontinental, The Rock, Triple H. Um, mankind, the, um, um, uh, Briscoe, um, I mean, the list goes on, Shawn Michaels, uh, Diesel, I mean, just some I, very iconic big names have, have had that title, and to me, you know, the Intercontinental Champ Championship was always, uh, when a guy had it, that was, that was his... You know, that was basically saying, hey, you know, you're good. You know, if you have this title, we're letting you have this title. You know, this was a put this this title basically pushed you to being the you know world champion. You know, um, you know, as I, like I said, it's a mid card title, so um, you know, it, it, it pushed you. You know, it gave you some credit and got you involved involved in a lot of uh, you know main storylines with the you know with the um, WWE title and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, I, I just wish I, I'm hoping that they'll go go in the right direction with title, have it def defend it more often than every other month, or just the big pay per views. Um, and that goes with the same thing with all the other titles. I mean, um, I wish they would bring back the European title. That was a great title. Uh, you had D'Lo Brown. You had um, I think the Hollies had it. Um, who else? Uh, I want to say Mark Henry had it. Um, Oh, and, and just recently, we just had it. Just, uh, it's been 15 years. I can't believe it. it's been 15 years since Owen Hart passed away. Um, I believe it's almost yeah, 15 years since he since he died. Um, hit there here in, uh, in the Kansas City area here at Kemper Arena. Uh, he was one of the, one of the great uh, Intercontinental Champions. I mean, he, I mean, he. Um, he really did a good job with that title and, and defending it and just making it as prestigious as it is. Um, so I uh, again hope the WWE does that more often. Um, I hope the WWE does um, you know put the titles on the line. I mean every pay per view you should have a title match. Um, but again, you know, it depends on the writers what they want to do. Um, and you know Vince needs to get a, you know Vince needs to kind of someone needs to get a hold of Vince and say hey. Because we need to do something with these titles. We need to defend them more. Uh, I mean, for goodness sakes, I mean, I know as much as a lot of people don't like it, but the Divas title, I mean, I thought it was kind of cool having two, you know, types of titles for the Divas, and now they, you know, merge into one just being a Divas title. But, I mean, even the Divas need a storyline. Somebody needs to get, you know, do that. But now they're kind of doing that. Um, for I, I believe tonight, um, I, I, I have strong suspicion, because uh, I've been watching Raw here, so I have a strong, um, we're supposed to find out who AJ's, um, I guess, uh, Seeker of Myra is, uh, and I honestly don't, I can't even think of anybody that he could be, um, it may be somebody that we haven't seen for a while, I don't know, um, but, uh, the AJ and, um, and, and uh, Caitlin, that's going to be a very interesting match. I can't wait for that to happen. They actually have some really good matches at, in uh, FCW. Uh, you guys go YouTube that there. It's they have some really good matches in, in, for divas. I mean, just really good, decent matches. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Fandango. Uh, well, this episode supposed to be about Fandango's injury, but uh, yeah, he's going to be out for probably a good month, a month and a half uh, before he's back in there. 
And, you know, honestly, I, that was going to be my pick. I, I really thought, I'm like, you know, this is, you know, he's, you know, had to be that corny Johnny Curtis. that had these weird, you know, one-liners. He's, you know, using just, you know, just corny stuff. And I figured out, I'm like, okay, he, they obviously see some potential in him. You know, they're going to push. They're going to give him a real good push someday. So, push someday. So, um, you know, if, if he was in this match, I that was I don't see that was going to be my pick uh, for payback. But since uh, he's not going to be in the match, so far as we know it, um, it's going to be just, it's going to be um, Wade Barrett, the Intercontinental Champion, going against The Miz. So, it's going to be just a regular one on one match. Um, but like I said, I've been doing a lot of stuff online, and uh, the word on the, the word on the internet is that uh, Curtis Axel uh, could be the could be the third guy uh, getting pushed for the Intercontinental title. And if that happens, then I'm gonna have to say he's uh, that would be my pick, I, Curtis Axel, because it'd be a good way for Paul Heyman to build his guy up, build a storyline. Uh, as you know, you know Triple H and. Um, Triple H uh, had that match against them. Uh, Cena had a match against. Them. Of course, they were, you know, I, I guess you wouldn't say a, you know, up and up match. It was an up and up match, a clean match, uh, a clean win or anything. Um, but you know, they're, they're they see some potential in in, uh, in uh, Curtis Axel. And uh, like I said, he was really good at you know, he was Michael McGilly Cuddy the tag. He had the tag ties with with uh, David Otunga. Uh, I mean, I thought it was cool. I really thought that while there, I thought it was going to really, uh, when they introduced him into the WWE as uh, Michael McGillicuddy and um, uh, when uh, uh, Husky Harris was coming about. Now, and of course, that, I have another video for that. His, the Wyatt family, their look creepy as hell. I mean, I seen the promo for that. I might, even, actually, I might uh, have that in my next video. They are creepy as hell. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, when they were yeah going back to that, they were, when they were introduced and gave Cena a run for the money, uh, and they were part of the new Nexus. I thought like I'm thinking like wow, you know Joe's gonna Joe Henney's gonna be a part of the WWE now, you know, um, and then when they revealed that his name was gonna be Mike McGillicuddy, I'm like. Well, I would figure they have to really use his real name, you know, Jack, because you know, everyone knows he's, you know, most wrestling fans that follow wrestling um, religiously and on a daily basis like I do uh, would, you know, would think he would use his dad's name. He was kind of used the Mr. Gimmick, you know, Mr. Perfect Gimmick and, and whatnot, so. And there you see Fandango wins the match, so he's the new Intercontinental Champion. Unfortunately, he won't be a part of the match. Uh, at the actual pay -per at the actual payback review, but um, you know this guy. I mean, this could be it. I mean, this this could have been his uh, his match. So, all right. Well, that is uh, it for this episode. Of the first episode of ESG and Met Game Center. Uh, it was fun to talk. But hey, let me know who you guys think is going to be. Uh, who you, is it going to be? Um, Way Barrett versus. Uh, uh, the Miz, or will it be the uh, will it be a triple threat match? Will it be the Miz versus Wade Barrett versus Curtis Axel? Uh, if it is, I would I would love it if it's going to be a triple threat match with Curtis Axel a part of it, and my money will be on Curtis Axel. So uh, that is it for this episode. Uh, stick around for another episode of ESGN Game Center where uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Ryan Braun and uh, the whole. Uh, Alex Rodriguez, PED scandal that's going on right now, and we'll have also have some WWE content. So, see you guys later.